Hi there, my name's Richard McMunn from the interview training website, howtobecome.com, and in this tutorial, I will teach you how to pass a civil service interview. So in a second, I'm going to walk through this door and undertake a live civil service mock interview. So if you have a job interview coming up for any role whatsoever with the civil service, make sure you stay tuned because I will help you to pass it. And just very quickly, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. I am on a mission to help as many people as possible to pass their interviews. I can only do that if you are subscribed. And please give the video a like because that tells me you find the content useful. Okay, let's get into this interview. Pay attention because I'll teach you exactly how to pass your civil service interview. Let's go. Enter. Hi there, my name's Richard. Hi. Nice to meet you, sir. And you. Thanks. Nice to meet you. Please take a seat. Thank you very much. So welcome to this interview, Richard. My name's Andrew and this is my colleague Joshua. So today we're going to be interviewing you for this civil service role. So if you're sitting comfortably and ready, can you start by telling me about yourself? Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be interviewed for this civil service position today. Before I applied for the role, I studied the job description in detail to make sure that I already had the necessary skills, the qualities and the experience to excel within the position. I am very good at working at pace. So if you were to give me multiple tasks and projects to work on, they would always be done on time and to the necessary standard. I am a strong communicator and I understand that that's important whilst communicating with people in your team within the civil service or whilst communicating with external stakeholders. I would describe myself as a resilient person and I can solve difficult problems whilst under pressure. And I am also a very good team worker. I understand within the civil service you can only achieve your goals if you work hard as part of a team. So I have lots of experience in different roles of working with other people, collaborating with others, solving difficult problems under pressure, and also making sure that I always focus on the bigger picture, making sure that I understand where the organisation is heading to. In previous roles, I gained lots of great achievements. So for example, I was renowned in a previous role for delivering excellent customer service. And I always spoke to customers after they had experienced the organisation to find out how they felt we could improve and develop. And I would always feed that back to my manager so we could continually improve and develop. So I am the type of person who will always act as a positive role model for the civil service. I will always embrace change positively. And I understand that in order for the civil service to keep moving forward, it needs its employees to take on board change and deliver it at a fast pace. And finally, I will always learn things quickly and take responsibility for my own professional development. Thank you. Why do you want to work for the civil service? There are several reasons why I want to work for the civil service. The first reason is I'm the type of person who always wants to grow, develop and improve within my role. And I understand, having researched the civil service, you are very supportive of your employees and you encourage them to be the best version of themselves possible. I also want to work in an organisation where the people within the team embrace change positively. So I am a strong believer that if an organisation is going to achieve its objectives and continue to grow and develop, it needs people to take on board change positively. You have to view it with a positive attitude and go all out to deliver change because that then impacts positively on the people that you are serving. And whilst on that subject, serving people, the civil service gives you the opportunity in your role to positively influence the lives of others. So I will be responsible for delivering excellent service and I will get to see firsthand the positive impact the work I'm doing is having on other people. Finally, I want to work for the civil service because I believe it is a position that is secure and providing I do a really good job for the civil service, I will have high levels of job security. And that's important to me because I'm seeking long-term employment with the civil service and I plan to be here for a long period of time. So those are the reasons why I want to work for the civil service. How do you adapt to change in an organisation? 
Well, first and foremost, I see change as a necessity in any organisation if it is to continually improve. So I enjoy change and I see it as a positive thing within any organisation. So I will always embrace it positively and I see change as an opportunity for me to learn new skills, to work alongside different people who've got different experiences and also to help myself develop professionally. So whenever change comes into a team or an organisation, I will firstly listen to what the change proposal is and that will allow me to understand where it is we are heading as a team or an organisation and I will then assess what I can do to contribute to the change positively. And I also would see that I would have a responsibility in a team to help other people understand the change process and to view it with a positive attitude. Thank you. Tell me about time when you've delivered something at pace. I was working in a previous role and it was late on a Friday afternoon and all of a sudden our website went down. Now this had potentially disastrous consequences for the organisation because the following morning, the Saturday morning at 9am, we had an online sale planned. Now a lot of time and effort by the team had gone into getting this online sale ready. So I had an important task to complete by 5pm on the Friday afternoon and that was to try and get the website back up and running. So I started by calling around a number of local IT companies to see if they could help and they couldn't. None of them had the capacity or the resources to help us. So I decided to use my initiative and I went online and I found an online outsourcing website and I managed to hire a web developer who was overseas to help us resolve the issue with the website. So this took about two hours to get resolved, but I managed to get him to find the problem to the website and also to get it back up and running in time. And actually, by 5.30, the website was fully back up and running. So whenever there's an issue at work where I need to work at pace, I believe I am at my best because I will analyse the problem, I will work out what it is I or the team needs to do, and I will then put a plan of action in place to get it resolved. Tell me about a time when you dealt with a difficult customer. I can remember taking a telephone call in my previous role and it was a customer who was very unhappy with the service they had received from our company. So I started out by listening to the customer on the telephone but it was clear that they were trying to get a reaction from me. They were being unfortunately rude in how they were speaking to me and I felt that they were trying to get me to react. However, I fully understood how they must have been feeling and I needed to listen to the customer carefully to let them vent their frustrations. So I allowed them to speak and whilst I was speaking I demonstrated effective listening skills. I acknowledged their issue, I acknowledged how they must have been feeling and I explained to them that I too would feel exactly the same as then if that had happened to me. So once they had had time to speak I then apologised unreservedly and I asked them a series of questions to find out what I could do to put things right for them. And I then, by following company guidelines, put a plan of action in place to resolve their issue quickly. So by apologising, by listening to the customer, by not rising to any potential confrontation, and by not taking their comments personally, I was able to come up with a successful resolution. And I understand that effective customer service is really important whilst working within the civil service because you are dealing with customers and stakeholders on a regular basis. Thank you. Tell me about a time where you had to multitask. A situation occurred in my previous role where the manager came into the office to speak to the team and he said that a member of staff, a valued member of staff, was going to be off sick for several weeks and he asked for a volunteer to carry out their work in addition to their own. So I immediately put my hand up and I saw this as an opportunity for me to learn somebody else's role and also to contribute to the organisation in its time of need. So my manager then sat down with me and gave me a brief of what I needed to do. So whilst he was speaking to me, I took notes and I then went away and I prioritised both my tasks 
and my team member's task, the person who was going to be off sick. So I decided to draw up a list of what tasks needed my most urgent attention. And to tackle this, I used effectively a traffic light system. So the red tasks were the ones that needed to be done straight away. The amber tasks were ones that needed to be done next. And finally, the green tasks were ones that I could leave potentially to the end of the working week. And by prioritising the task, working out which ones I would need to do, and also by blocking out any external distractions, I was able to complete two people's work within that short time period. Tell me about a time when you use your communication skills to influence someone. A situation occurred in a previous role within a team I was a part of whereby a work colleague was not performing to their usual high standard. I could detect that something wasn't right, so I decided to speak to him during a tea break one afternoon. Now before I spoke to him I decided what I was going to say, how I was going to say it, and I was tactful in my approach while speaking to him. And I said to him that I'd noticed he wasn't carrying out his tasks to his usual standard and he appeared to be disinterested. Now, after probing a little bit further, he eventually started to open up to me and he explained that he was having personal problems at home and he felt a little bit under pressure at work because he couldn't manage all the tasks that he was responsible for. So I listened to him and I sympathised with his situation. And I then said to him that I was here to help. And I suggested that he should first of all speak to the Human Resources Department to seek support from them because they would be able to help him. And I then said that I would analyse the tasks that he was responsible for to see whether I could help him, whether I could take any tasks away from him to ease the burden whilst he was going through his problems at home. So I managed to find several tasks that I took from him and I then went along with him to the Human Resources Department to provide some support whilst he was explaining to him what the problems were. And, and the Human Resources Department were brilliant. They helped him and by also me taking off several tasks from him, this helped him to overcome his problems at home. And within four weeks from that initial time when I spoke to him, he got back to normal and he was back up working effectively. And I believe that was achieved by using effective communication skills. Thank you. So I hope you are enjoying this civil service interview training presentation. And the next thing I want you to do is to click that link right now in the top right hand corner of the video and head through to my website, howtobecome.com and you can get instant access to my full civil service interview training masterclass. Now, if you click that link, it takes you through to this page right here and you can access, get instant access to my civil service interview questions and answers online training course. It's a comprehensive training course. I have put it together myself with the sole intention to help you to prepare effectively for your civil service interview. And it's perfect for any job role within the civil service. Make sure you check that page out right now. I've helped lots of people to pass loads of interviews over the years. I am also a former fire officer and I've worked in recruitment for many years. So I am well experienced for helping people to pass their civil service interview. So make sure you check that link out right now. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel because I am on a mission to help as many people as possible to pass their interviews. And of course, I can only do that if you are subscribed to the channel. Please hit the like button. That tells me you find the content and the tutorials useful. And it also motivates me to create more free content for you. And also make sure you connect with me on LinkedIn. I've put my LinkedIn link in the description below the video. Thank you very much for watching and I wish you all the best in your pursuit to passing your civil service interview. Have a great day.